Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Welcome to my video series, The Filters of Aurora HDR 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the tone curve filter that's found in Aurora HDR 2018. Okay, the tone curve filter is pretty much identical to the tone curve that's found in Lightroom and Photoshop, although in Photoshop they call it curves. And I think to begin with, I'll just give you a quick primer about the tone curve. As you look at the tone curve, probably the most significant feature is the diagonal line that goes from the lower left to the upper right. And what that line represents are all the tones in the image with the darkest tones being represented down here at the lower left. And we'll start moving away from those darkest tones through the shadows. And as we move up towards the upper right, we'll approach the midtones in the middle. And as we go further, we'll get up into the brighter tones, the highlights, then the whites. So that little line represents all the tones from the blacks to the whites with the shadows, midtones, and highlights being in the middle or along the line. And what you could do is you could move that line around. You'll add points to it and you could actually manipulate the specific tones you want to manipulate. So if you just wanted to affect highlights, you would do something up here in the upper right part of this line. If you want to just do something to the shadows, you do something in the lower left part of the line. Now along the top you'll see we have these circles and it's clicked on white. That represents all three color channels, red, green, and blue. So when you affect a tone by moving this line around, you will affect all three color channels. If you want to just affect the tones that are in a single color channel, you could click on that specific color channel, red, green, or blue. Then move the line around to affect just the tones that are in that color channel. Now behind the curve you'll see there's a histogram and the histogram from left to right is all the tones are plotted on this histogram and again you could see just the red tones by clicking on the red circle just the green tones by clicking on the green circle and just the blue tones by clicking on the blue circle and of course click on the white circle and you'll see all the tones plotted back there Along the bottom, we have three sliders. The middle slider are the midtones. If you move it to the right, you're going to make the midtones darker. If we move it to the left, we'll make the midtones brighter. Along uh, the far left here, we actually have the black point. If I move it in, I'm moving the black point in, so I'm affecting the midtones. I'm starting to make the midtones become darker and clip. So I'm moving that black point in. The in along the histogram, so I'm clipping more of the midtones. Similarly, if we go over to this far right hand slider and move that to the left, I'm taking the highlights and moving them in. So I'm making the white point move in. So I'm starting to clip white into the midtones further. So that's how you can just manipulate the white and black point or the midtone point by moving those three sliders. Now, in real world application, what do you use the tone curve for? Well, most often I'll use it to add contrast. Now, of course, you have contrast sliders, especially in this program, Aurora HDR 2018. We could affect contrast a lot of different ways. So I find, for me at least, I don't use the tone curve as much in Aurora HDR 2018 as I do, let's say, in Lightroom. In Lightroom, I use it on almost every single image. But if you want to add contrast or take contrast away, it's very easy to do with the tone curve. What you would do is you would click on this white circle so that we're affecting all the tones on all three color channels and put a point somewhere in the middle of this diagonal line by simply clicking on your left mouse button. You see we have a point there. I actually moved the curve or moved the line a little bit when I did that. So we have a like that's an anchor point. Then what you do is you go down here and right in the middle of this square, grab the line, grab the line by clicking on it and pull down slightly. And then go up here in the 
middle of this circle in the upper right and click and then push up a little bit. Now you've added three points and this is called an S-curve and that adds contrast to the image. I'm going to turn it off. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So we added contrast to the image by simply using the tone curve. And that's probably the most common like application of the tone curve. Now what you'll find though, once you start experimenting with it, you could really get into a lot of different looks with your image. And I think what uh, Instagram filters, those of you that use Instagram and might mess around with the filters, a lot of the filters really are just manipulations of the tone curve. And I'll, I guess to better demonstrate that, I'm going to open a different image. And with this image, it's a common thing I've been seeing, particularly with um, Japanese photographers doing fashion. They do in like street photography or street fashion, urban fashion. And I've been seeing this look a lot. So this is something I could show you relatively easy with the tone curve. And by the way, this is just a single image that I previously, before this video, um, ran through Aurora HDR. You could process a single image in Aurora HDR 2018. And this is a single tone mapped image of my son's band, Kill the Clock. Now, this look I see a lot of Japanese photographers doing involves making the darker tones have a blue tinge to it. That's part of it. And to do that, you would click on the blue channel and you would go over here where the darker tones are and you would push up on, the t on this end here. And you could see how it's making anything that's darker have a blue tinge to it. Then what they'll do is they usually come over here on the upper right and they might move this in a little bit. So they're moving the white point in. So they're kind of making any of the brighter parts of the image even a little bit brighter with a tiny bit of a, a blue tinge to it. Then what they'll do is they'll come over here with the all channels part of the curve. And they'll manipulate this as well and move this one up so it kind of washes out that image a little bit. See how it's kind of giving it a little more washed out look. And I've been seeing this look a lot on if you go on Instagram and you like maybe follow like the hashtag like um I don't know like urban fashion or street fashion. Uh you'll see this kind of look a lot. And I've seen it a lot from uh Japanese photographers as I mentioned. So I'll turn it off. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So there's just uh, one thing you could do with the tone curve. Um, really, I could probably make a series of videos on the tone curve and the different looks you could get with it. But that'll get you started. You could experiment with it, maybe do some searching on the internet and see other looks you could achieve with the tone curve. It's a very powerful, versatile tool that you could do a lot with. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.